I'm Luke Summerhays, and I love Fido. In traditional fairy folklore, eating the food of the fair folk is often a path to disaster. Join the fairies for a tea party and have a sip? Maybe you'll wake up 100 years later, or as a frog, or maybe you won't wake up at all. Accept a bite to eat? Maybe you're transforming? Maybe you just accidentally accepted a marriage proposal from the fairy queen? Or maybe you're bound to the afterlife for the rest of your waking years? Perhaps because of this association, a few food-based Pokémon have been fairy types over the years. They also happen to all be somewhat dessert-based. Cakes, pastries, creams, and so on. If it isn't deeply rooted in Celtic folklore, perhaps the association is as simple as sweets and fairies both being equally cute. Fido is fairy, food, and very cute. A little dog with a doughy body and ears that look like Princess Leia's bun. The internet immediately fell in love with it. The ears could be based on the Spanish pastry Ansaimada, or a classic Danish pastry. Pokemon Scarlet tells us, This Pokemon is smooth and moist to the touch. Yeast in Fido's breath induces fermentation in the Pokemon's vicinity. Or Pokemon Violet tells us, The yeast in Fido's breath is useful for cooking. So this Pokemon has been protected by people since long ago. Fido is very cute, but the idea of yeasty breath that makes baking go better is... it's odd at the very least. The whole Pokemon could be a pun on the idea of purebred dogs. The English name is an obvious mix of dough with the common dog name Fido, while the Japanese name Papimachi is a simple cute mix of a baby dog and a popular Japanese sweet. With the pun game being so strong on Fido, the idea of an evolution saw a lot of speculation online. At level 26, we got our answer, when Fido evolved into Daxbun. Daxbun is still an adorable dog, and still a pastry, but now cooked to a nice golden brown. This is reflected in the ability Well-Baked Body, which means Fido takes no damage from fire-type attacks, but is instead boosted by them. Pokemon Violet tells us, The surface of this Pokemon skin hardens when exposed to intense heat, and its body has an appetizing aroma. Like Fido before it, Daxbun apparently has a scent which helps produce food, though the exact implementation here is a little less gross. Pokemon Scarlet tells us, The pleasant aroma that emanates from this Pokemon's body helps wheat grow, so Daxbun has been treasured by farming villages. The name, Daxbun, of course combines the famous breed of sausage dog, the Dachshund, with a bun. The Japanese name is Bautzel, combining the bow wow sound of a dog with a pretzel, another baked good it somewhat resembles, and which is often enjoyed with sausages. Along with its handy ability and the already defensive fairy type, Daxbun is overall a pretty okay Pokemon. Tie in a decent move pool and you've got a pretty handy monster. I'm far from a competitive expert, but I made good use of Daxbun throughout my campaign of Pokemon Scarlet. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have a large number of dog-based Pokemon, and this adorable little duo start things off in a good place. As Pokemon Legends gave us an adorable new Growlithe this year as well, things have never looked better for dog-loving Pokemon fans. Myself included. Music for Luke Loves Pokemon is by Jonathan Cromey. Artwork for the show is by Katie Groves. Writing, producing, and editing is all by me, Luke Summerhays. And funding is provided by lovely listeners at patreon.com slash podcastiopodcastius. I love it when you guys get in touch. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook at LukeLovesPKMN and let me know your thoughts about our next monsters, Smoliv and Squawkabilly, or share your love for any Pokemon. Also, join me Friday nights from 8pm UK time at twitch.tv slash LukeLovesPKMN for some Pokemon streams. And even if you don't feel like doing any of that, thank you so much just for listening. I love Fido, and remember, I love you too.